Here is another video requested by one of our viewers who wanted to know what it might look like if all of the plumbing was installed in one wall. So we're going to have a bathroom, bathtub, toilet, sink. Then we're going to have a kitchen sink and a wash machine drain. So here's our kitchen sink. Let's go ahead and remove it so that we can get a better view of the plumbing here. Head over to the wash machine drain line to where we're going to have a clean out above the sand tee here. This is a two inch line here with a two inch vent. And we do have a two by six framed wall here. If you can use a two by four wall, go for it. And the vent will go through the roof. So we have three vents going through the roof here. And then we have our bathroom lavatory sink vent tying into this vent here. And this vent here is actually going to have a section of it where we're going to create a wet vent. And the main line in this example is going to go directly underneath this wall. And you're probably not going to be able to use this example in a load bearing wall situation. So we are going to have a wet vent from here to here. And even though this doesn't need to be three inches, I pulled this example from another one of my videos where this just came down and went this way. We didn't have this section attached to the plumbing. And then we use this clean out here in that example for the end of the line clean out. And the wash machine drain will come in. These are all combo fittings here. So here we're going to have a three inch or a four inch. You might need a four inch drain line for your project and you might need to check with your local building department for that. And of course we are going to have a end of the line clean out along with a clean out in the front here. And I believe the maximum for a clean out, the distance in between clean outs is 75 feet. But again, you would need to check with your local building department to validate that information. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom side of the plumbing drain lines where we will be using a combo fitting here and a Y fitting here. And again, this section from here to about here will be considered a wet vent. And a view of the clean out here and the bathtub trap, inch and a half. And in this example here, we're using an inch and a half drain line for the kitchen sink. And that's going to be the minimum requirement for a single kitchen sink. If you're going to hook up a garbage disposal and a dishwasher, you might consider using a two inch line there. And I would consider using a two inch line anyway for your kitchen sink and it's usually not going to cost you a lot more money in a situation like this. Next up let's go ahead and make a couple of changes. One of those will be connecting the kitchen vent into this vent line here. Now keep in mind that this needs to slope a quarter of an inch down in this direction here so that any condensation or moisture that forms in here will be able to drain into the plumbing drain system. Let's go ahead and take a closer look of that and then go to the other side where we can get a better view of it here. And this is all inch and a half here and then we have a two inch line here. And that two inch line is for the toilet vent. If it wasn't going to be venting the toilet, just the bathtub, it could be an inch and a half. And in some cases, this pipe might need to be larger or smaller. So again, check with your local building department about that. And if you notice, we got rid of the three inch line and the clean out here. And I don't know if you would need a clean out here. The code says every time a pipe changes direction, even though I've rarely came across that while working on a variety of different construction projects. So the inch and a half trap is going to die into a sanitary T here. This will have a two inch going out here, two inch going out here, inch and a half coming out here, and then into a combo fitting here two inches going into a three inch or a four inch line, whatever you're going to be using. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the laundry. I went ahead and turned it around and dropped the clean out below the sanitary tee. And I haven't found any building code that says the sanitary tee needs to go below or above. I know that some people like to install it above in case this section here needs to be cleaned out. And don't forget that the rest of these fixtures can be flipped around to the other side also, if needed for your project. And if you need to, you can always relocate the fixtures. You can move it further down the line, or I could take this one and move it to the front, or even somewhere in between here. And I did the same with the kitchen sink. And of course, this isn't the only way to build something like this. So let's go ahead and take a look at another way in a different house. And basically what we have is a one bedroom home 
closet, bath, living room, and kitchen. And we're going to have a sink, toilet, and a tub and shower combo unit, along with a washing machine and a kitchen sink. So let's go ahead and take a look at the kitchen sink where we're going to be going around the king studs. Remember, it's not a good thing to drill through the king studs if they're going to be 2x4. You can drill through a 2x6. And even though I used 2 inch pipes for our vents, you can use an inch and a half pipe here and an inch and a half pipe here for your kitchen sink vent along with the wash machine vent. However, we will need a two inch pipe for the washing machine, inch and a half minimum for the kitchen sink at the connection here between the trap and the vent and the drain. And that's the fact that the distance between these two pipes here needs to be at least twice the diameter of the drain pipe, which would be four inches from here to prevent the water in the trap that is creating the seal to prevent sewer gases from entering into your home from siphoning out. And I'll try to create a video on that in the future. So in the previous example, I had this coupling right here butting right up against the sanitary tee. And that is not going to make your building inspector happy. And in this example, I have one vent coming out of the roof. And even though I'm going to be using a two inch pipe here, in your area, it might need to be larger. And in my opinion, this is the only thing that could create a problem with the plumbing drain pipe layout in this video throughout all of the different cities, counties, or states located within the United States of America. And this is another lesson I learned while doing some of my videos in the past. Next up, let's take a look at the bathroom lavatory sink that usually has an inch and a quarter drain and a trap going into an inch and a half pipe. So what we have here is an inch and a half pipe coming off of the sanitary tee and then connecting to a fitting that will reduce this to an inch and a quarter. And even though I have a two inch drain and a two inch vent, you can have an inch and a half vent and an inch and a half drain for a bathroom lavatory sink. And of course, I'm going to have a two inch vent for the toilet. And in my example here, I have a two inch vent for the bathtub. And if you're going to have a concrete foundation, then you're going to need to box it out before you pour your slab so that the plumber will have room to install the trap for the bathtub. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the bathroom fixtures so that we can get a better look at the plumbing here. And of course, we're going to have a clean out located in the front and a clean out located in the back. So if there is ever a clog in the pipe here, you're going to be able to run a drain cleaning snake through it. And even though I might not need a clean out here, as long as I can remove the trap so that I can run a drain pipe cleaning snake through here, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a clean out here and a clean out here. So let's go ahead and put a couple of clean outs in here. Next up, let's go ahead and remove the concrete foundation. And then let's go ahead and remove the ground so that we can get a better look at what we're dealing with here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the toilet and the bathtub drain pipe connection over here and of course the toilet with the flange over here. And another thing I changed here is that I added a four inch pipe. This is all four inches along with the toilet. And I believe in the previous example I had three inch pipe. And even if it does work for your building inspector, I think any plumber will tell you that it's going to be money well spent using a four inch pipe here instead of a three inch pipe. And I'm using a Y combo fitting here along with a Y combo fitting here. You can use a sand tee here. And we're using a sanitary tee here along with another combo Y fitting and a long sweep 90 here. And you can use a short 90 here. However, I like to use the long 90s here if I can. And our vent starts here and goes up and then starts here above the sanitary tee and goes up. And you can see here where the clean outs could be used to clear this section here or this section here if it got clogged. And if this section here got clogged, you might need to pull the toilet or run some type of a snake through the toilet. Next up, let's head over to the lavatory drain. 
where we're going to have a sanitary T here. Again, this can all be inch and a half. However, I have two inch going all the way through here. So if you were going to use inch and a half, you could use an inch and a half combo fitting, inch and a half here, four inches here, and then a long sweep 90 here, and then a sanitary T here. And if you're going to use what I'm using in the video, then you're going to have an inch and a half connection over here, a two inch connection here, and a two inch connection for your fitting. And again, this is going to be a sanitary T. Then we're going to have the same combo over here coming off with a two inch line. And that two inch line will go over and pick up the wash machine drain and the kitchen sink. And if it's going to be easier for you, then you could always come over here, forget about the 45, come over here, and then 90 back over to here as another option to connect the kitchen sink to the wash machine drain line. And here we're going to have another Y fitting, but it's going to be two inches all the way around. And then we're going to come over to a two inch 45 and then a two inch long sweep 90, come up to a two inch sanitary T. And then we're going to angle the pipe a little bit and then use a couple of 22 and a half degree fittings here to pick up the kitchen sink. Now this line here will need to be an inch and a half. So we're going to have a sanitary T fitting with an inch and a half over here, two inches on the top, two inches on the bottom. However, you could use a fitting with a two inch bottom, an inch and a half side outlet, and an inch and a half coming out of the top. And that's normally what I would use to hook up a kitchen sink. However, on the wash machine, we're going to have a two inch 90 over here, long 90 or a sweep. Then that's going to come up to a two inch sanitary T. That's two inches all the way around in our example, or you can have a two inch coming out of the side, two inch at the bottom, and an inch and a half coming out for your vent. Then we're going to use a trap and then come up with a 45 to finish the connection for our laundry drain. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the venting for the bathroom sink, and that will connect to an upside down double sanitary T. And then our bathtub vent will also hook up to the same pipe. We're allowed to have up to 12 fixture units or 20 fixture units, depending upon the developed length of the vent system. And when we put the sanitary tee upside down, that's going to have a slope that's going to go in this direction of a quarter of an inch per foot on both sides. So we're going to be sloping away from this vent pipe. So any moisture or condensation that gets in here can safely drain out through the waste system. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.